he rang for twenty. Look, let me let's go and pull this rap sheet real quick. Okay, let's go get the let's go get the let's go get the receipts on these boys, man. They sitting around here playing with this just believe doctrine. We coming with the facts. Just believe and just have faith, man. We don't follow that trash. We put that work in in the gym. Now listen, what's going on here? Caesar Augustus reigned from twenty seven B C and died in fourteen A D. Jesus ain't even started his ministry yet. Luke said he didn't start till he's about 30. So Augustus died in 14 AD. So before Jesus was even on the cross, before any apostles was even selected or even thought about, Christianity was already in operation. What is these boys talking about? And, 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 and Melito or Sardis, these are the faithful men that supposedly got their doctrine from the apostles. Tell them boys to come on. Tell, listen, y'all, listen, what I want you guys to do, y'all go tag that Tales from the Crypt, that, that bony, frail looking choker, and you tell them to come on and play, come to the playground. They did all that capping in them videos, all these dumb demons and this and that. You tell that dumb demon, come to the playground and play. Let's play. Go get them boys. Go get, I don't care who you go get. Go get them. Tell them, tag them boys and tell them, let's play. If you talk, the talk you gotta walk. The walk, I don't know what you thought, but I've been taught by Yahoo. By Yahoo. I say by Yahoo. You know the all should die. And now y'all all should cry. Because the real is back. I say the real is back. I took L's that's fast. And yet still. Shalom and greetings to all the Israelites and all the strangers out there scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. I greet every last one of you in the one and only true name of the Honorable Abba Yahuwah. Now, this morning, family, we have gathered together again for another slaughter as I continue my campaign against the New Testament, the New Testament writers, and also the New Testament followers, okay? Those in any shape, fashion, or form, okay? Um... We're getting ready to get into a message that I have titled uh, Christianity Before Jesus. OK, and this lesson is going to be sponsored by a bishop of Sardis known as Melito of Sardis. Now, according to the church fathers, he was a great luminary, a great light. OK, and he's basically not the founding father, but one of the founding fathers, he basically um operated um within the early second century okay um he was over one of the churches that are mentioned in the book of uh revelations sardis okay so we're getting ready to get into the writings of melito of sardis a church father and we're going to prove that before any christ was on the scene any you know because these these guys want you to believe that they're uh, holding on to the faithful things that was passed down by the apostles and all this other stuff. Well, Melito was getting ready to debunk that today and show us that way before any Christ or any apostle was even the thought of, these people was already in circulation, worshiping these pagan gods because during this time period, these people worship Mithra, okay? So before any Christ was crucified, before he could even get to the cross, you know what I'm saying? The people was already worshiping Christianity, okay, or, you know, which is really the worship of Mithra, okay, so we're getting ready to bear all these things out, and we're going to continue to crush Christianity, and anybody that get caught in that burning house, you're going to die in that house, okay, so now, let's get, in, let's get right into it, and um, we're going to open this up, right, and I'm going to start, um, we're going to first go into the writings of Eusebius, okay? The early church father, or the not the early church father, but um, the church historian that wrote the church history, okay? And we're going to be going, I'm going to be going to Philip Schaff's website of, uh, you know, the early Christian writings. I will leave the link here for you guys. But let's open up with uh, um, Eusebius first. And he is, we're in book four and we're in chapter 26 okay it states in those days also melito bishop of the parish in sardis and apollinarius bishop of hierapolis hierapolis 
enjoyed great distinction. Each of them on his own part addressed apologies in behalf of the faith to the above mentioned emperor of the Romans who reigned at the time. So one of the things that Eusebius is locking us in with is he tells us, okay, each of them on his own part address apologies in behalf of the faith, okay? Letting us know that this apology that he sent to the Roman emperor was on behalf of the faith that he believed in and the faith that we believe in, okay? Now listen to what he goes on to say. He says, the following works of these writers have come to our knowledge of Melito, the two books on the Passover, one on the conduct of life and the prophets, the discourse on the church and one on Lord's day, still further, one on the faith of men and one on his creation. Another also on obedience to faith, one on the senses besides these works on the soul and body and on the baptism and one on truth and on the creation and generation of Christ. His discourses also on prophecy and on, the, and on hospitality, still further the key and the books on the devil and the apocalypse of John and the works on the uh, corp reality of God. And finally, the book addressed to, the book addressed to Antonius. So what he what, so what Eusebius is telling us is that Melito wrote all of these books, all of these works. And the only thing we have today is scraps from Melito. OK, and I'm going to explain to you why we only have scraps from these all these men. They claim were the early church fathers. And I mean, it's really simple. Is because these people were worshiping things contrary to what they want you to believe in what is known today as the New Testament. OK, so they have to destroy and get this stuff out of the way because the people really see like what I'm going to show you today, the stuff that they were worshiping, they would run out of the church. OK, it wouldn't even, even be, be up for debate. OK, um, so he goes into and he goes into this, but we're getting ready to get into the actual uh, the actual excerpt straight from the mouth of uh eusebius but if you but if you if you read this here right he goes on to speaks about uh how again he adds the following for our, our philosophy formerly flourished among the barbarians but have sprung up among the nations under thy rule now we're going to go get the exact expert straight out the mouth of melito that um eusebius is uh telling us right here but what i want to point what i want you guys can read this for edification purposes, and I uh, want you guys to read this, but this is Eusebius's account. We're going to go to Mal the Melito account, and we're going to read it straight from his mouth, but he he's basically reinforcing what Melito has said, and we can bear record that Melito actually said these things because we have some of his fragments. But what I want to do is, is that if we jump down here to the on this page right here, and of course, you can, you can look up the church history on any uh, website they got it, but I'm going to leave a link to this actual website. But um, it's in all of uh, wherever websites you go to is going to be there. But in verses uh, 13 and 14, let's read these because this is going to be important for brothers and sisters to understand. OK, it says Melito to his brother uh, once a miss. If I'm saying that correct, you know how these Greek names is. He says greeting. Now he's writing to one of his brothers. Now listen to what he says right here. He says, since thou has often in thy zeal for the word expressed a wish to have asterisks made from the law and the prophets concerning the Savior and concerning our entire faith and has also desired to have an accurate statement of the ancient books as regards the number and their order. I have endeavored to perform the task knowing thy zeal for the faith and thy desire to gain information in regards to the word and knowing that thou and thy yearning after God esteem these things above all else struggling to attain eternal life. Now, listen to what Melito said right here, because this is going to be critical, right? Now, just check this out, okay? Because it's funny, right? It says, accordingly, when I, when I went east and came to the place where these things were preached and done, OK, I learned accurately, accurately the books of the Old Testament and send them to thee as written below. Their names are followed. OK, now he writes, he speaks about all the all these books of the New Testament. And you all, you guys can see that there. But what I want to point out right here, right, is that he goes on to say in the last passage down here was that 
from which also I have made the extracts, dividing them into six books. Such are the words of Melito. So now here you have one of us that wants to, he, he, he wanted to know, he wanted the abstracts from where this stuff was contained at. So what Melito did is went through the Old Testament and gave him all of the abstracts of the things pertaining to uh, the faith, right? To the salvation. So why is it today? And if you notice, he didn't go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. He didn't send them to Paul or none of this trash that people are believing in the New Testament. He sent them to the Old Testament and gave them abstracts. So why today, when we put these Christians on the spot, and I'm talking about the undercover Christians hiding under these Hebrew names that's dumb as all I do is because they sitting under these Babylonian preachers that have not been sent, that do not have the light. Why can't they go into the books like Melito did and show this stuff in the Old Testament if they say that this stuff they believe in is a fulfillment of the Old Testament? Why can't they go in there and get that stuff? He didn't say, oh, well, this is what Paul said or this is what John said. Now, mind you, Melito which they don't, they they don't know, they don't have a, a a date of birth for him. They date him as dying between 160, 170, you know, somewhere in there because of the letter that he's writing to um, Antonius. Uh, yeah, Antonius. Okay. So because of the letter that he's writing, they said, okay, if he wrote this letter to him, that he was alive during this time period. So they know around the time period he was in operation, but he lived during the days and times of uh, Irenaeus, okay? He lived in the days and times of Justin Martyr and all these people that they put in front of you, he was alive during that time period operating down in Sardis in one of the places that the seven churches is being addressed in the book of Revelations, okay? So he don't go to, he don't refer this guy to John, Paul, Luke, or none of these people like that. He took him to the Old Testament. So why can't these jokers go into the Old Testament and get nothing? It's like when you take them, listen, when you take these Christians, and I'm talking about the under all these people. They all classify together. When I when I speak about Christians, I'm speaking about these people that's in these messianic camps that all they know is the New Testament. And they don't even know that. When you take them out of the New Testament and they have to go into that Old Testament as they claim and swim, they drown. It's like teaching a baby how to how to you know you got to put them on a little tricycle with training wheels and treat them, teach them how to ride again. And these are supposed to be the defenders of the faith. How are the defenders of the faith the most ignorant people whenever it comes down to this subject? They can't go into not and get nothing. Everything is all also always an image because when they start looking and what they would never admit to you is that they can't find this stuff. We've all been there. This is how we know that this stuff is fake. When we start to really look at the things that's in tonight, we know what it is. Okay. Now let's get right to the let's let's get right to Melito. Okay. Let's get down. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this thing. You know what I'm saying? Because this stuff is easy. So now we're going back to early Christian writings. I'm going to also leave the link down there to this website where you can go. Because I, me personally, I, I wouldn't waste my money buying none of that trash. It's straight, it's straight garbage, man. But at any rate, we're going to go to early Christian writings, okay? Um, and we're going to go to the fragments of Melito of Sardis, okay? Now, this dude gets into some stuff, man. Uh, and I encourage you guys to go ahead and read through here. That way you kind of know what's going on and you're able to put up a defense against these Christians that's going to try to run you into the church fathers. Oh, these are the faithful men that, 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 that carried the faith. But it's like when you start reading this stuff, it's like this dude states that uh, he states in this in this in this uh, this paragraph, he goes on to say that uh, I will further write and show as far as my ability go how and for what causes images were made to kings and tyrants and how they became regarded as gods now one of the things that he states right here is that he says the egyptians worship joseph the hebrew who was called serapis this false god this false deity that they was worshiping in egypt like and these are the, these are the faithful fathers these are so-called so the faithful men that carried the things from the apostles right but he goes in here and he basically breaks all of this stuff down and start talking about it. And when you start reading, this is how you know that, man, these people are lost. These ain't no people that was following any Hebrews and doing all this other stuff or nothing like that. But at any rate, let's skip, let's get down here to the skip on down here to the meat and potatoes of this uh of this whole thing, man. And we're gonna come on down here to from the apology addressed to Marcus Aurelius, okay? And let's get into this thing, right? Okay. Now, listen to what Melito has to say on the faith, right? He says, 
for the race of the pious, excuse me, is now persecuted in a way contrary to all precedents. Okay. So what he's saying is, okay, because I want to break this down as we go, is he's saying we're now facing persecution as never heard of before. Okay. Now, so basically what he's saying is because they want you to believe that the Christians were being persecuted. They were running, getting chased from, from land to land. This is not true. And Melito is telling us this. Okay. Now, because he's identifying the persecution that's going on during this, during his time period and saying that, hey, this 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 precedes all the stuff that ever happened to our people prior to this. So all this stuff about they were being persecuted is a lie. OK, now listen to what he says right here. He says being harassed by a new kind of edicts everywhere in Asia. Now, he's talking, speaking about where in the Bible Belt. This is where the seven churches of Asia was at that the book of Revelation speak about. Right. OK, let's let's let's, let's keep it mobbing. He says for unblushing informers and such as are greedy of other men's goods taking occasion from the orders issued, carry on their robbery without any disguise, plundering of their property night and day, those who are guilty of no wrong. So this has nothing to do with any Jesus or they being chased from here, being persecuted for Christ. What you got to understand when you go back and you study the Roman Empire, they used to rob these pagan temples. You know what I'm saying? All of the modern day temples, I mean, them churches that they got today over there in Rome was built over the temples of Mithra. They was robbing these temples and then they built churches over. This is why when you're going under the bottom of these churches, you have the Mithra remains there because that was the, this is what they was worshiping in the Roman Empire prior to modern day times. OK. So now listen what he goes on to say here. He says, if these proceedings take place at thy, at thy bidding, well and good for a just sovereign. Now, the, the other thing that I want you to understand is that he's writing to the Roman emperor to show uh to basically step in on their behalf so if the roman empire was really persecuting these people why would he be writing to them and and and, and asking them to basically step in if they were persecuting christians man the stuff is lies it's fairy tales it's like believing in harry potter and all this other stuff that these people believe in you know these fantasies oh i don't i don't get into none of that stuff listen what he says here it says for a just suffering would never take unjust measures and we, on our part, gladly accept the honor of such a death. This request only we present to thee, that thou wouldest first of all examine for thyself into the behavior of these reputed agents of no such strife, and then come to a just decision to whether they merit death and punishment or deserve to live safely and quiet. But if, on the contrary, it shall turn out that this measure and this new sort of command which it would be unbecoming to employ even against barbarian foe men, do not proceed from thee, then all the more do we entreat thee not to leave us thus exposed to the spoliation of the populace. So he's basically asking the Roman emperor to step in on his behalf and basically help him. Now listen to this, okay? Because this is where it get deep at. For the philosophy current with us flourished in the first instance among barbarians and when it afterwards sprang up among the nations under that rule. Oh, my goodness. So what he's telling us is that this so-called Christian doctrine that was passed down to faithful men and by the apostles and, and all this trash that you see these Christians spewing out of their mouth. Melito is telling us, now remember, Eusebius also agreed that this is the same faith that they were, that he was believing in. All of these people are believing in the same stuff. They're telling us the origin of this doctrine, and it's not no Jesus, no Yahushua, no mystery man running through the land of Judea, healing people, and all this other stuff. He tells us that it flows in the first place, not in Jerusalem, not among the Jews, not among the Hebrews, but among the barbarians. You're believing in Greek mythology. What is people not understanding about this? Now, see, I told you I'm going to get the receipts. I'm not playing with these boys, okay? And I've known this for years. I've known this for years. This is why I've been stepping on these church fathers. Because when I started the, the series on the great falling away, I, I, I've known this for years. I'm just in my bag right now. And this ain't it. I'm finna, listen, I'm finna tear all that stuff down. I'm not playing, Okay? Now, listen to what he says. 
And when it afterwards sprang up among the nations under thy rule during the distinguished reign of thy ancestor, Augustus. Now, who was Augustus? Augustus is the first Roman uh, uh, Caesar in, that, in the empire. He reigned from... He ran from twenty. Let me let's go and pull this rap sheet real quick. Okay. Let's go get the let's go get the let's go get the receipts on these boys, man. They sitting around here playing with this just believe doctrine. We coming with the facts. Just believe and just have faith, man. We don't follow that trash. We put that work in in the gym. Now listen what's going on here. Caesar Augustus reigned from 27 BC and died in 14 AD. Jesus ain't even started his ministry yet. Luke said he didn't start till he's about 30. So Augustus died in 14 AD. So before Jesus was even on the cross, before any apostles was even selected or even thought about, Christianity was already in operation. What is these boys talking about? And, 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 and Malito or Sardis, these are the faithful men that supposedly got their doctrine from the apostles. Tell them boys to come on. Tell, listen, y'all, listen, what I want you guys to do, y'all go tag that Tales from the Crypt, that, that bony, frail looking choker, and you tell them to come on and play, come to the playground. They did all that capping in them videos, all oh, these dumb demons and this and that. You tell that dumb demon, come to the playground and play. Let's play. Go get them boys. Go get, I don't care who you go get. Go get them. Tell them. Tag them boys and tell them let's play. Well, the faithful men, they believe. Go get them. Because Melito, the church fathers that y'all trying to run people into, tells us that this stuff originated among the barbarians. Quit playing with me. I told y'all I'm crushing this stuff and I'm going to step on it. So y'all tag that boy. Okay? Go get them false prophets and tell them come out to play. See, when I was quiet, y'all thought I was gone. I ain't going nowhere. You sneaking over here trying to get, let me see if they're going to sneak over here and get this doctrine. See, tiptoeing over here watching the videos because they're not even relevant. They have nothing, okay, because they're believing in mythology, okay? Now, let's keep stepping on this thing. I ain't playing with these boys. Now, listen to what he says. It proved to be a blessing of most happy omen to thy empire. Listen, for from that time, the Roman power has risen to greatness and splendor. To this power, thou hast succeeded as the much desired possessor, and such shall thou continue together with thy son, if thou protect that philosophy which has grown up in thy empire, and which took its rise with Augustus. Oh my goodness, don't play with me, man. Don't play. Y'all not studied enough. Y'all believe in fairy tales. These dudes are parrots. They, and, and they parrot back things other men to say they don't do the research. We are in the gym. See, listen to what he says here. Uh, he said, to which also thy more recent ass, listen, to which also thy more recent ancestors paid honor, along with the other religions prevailing in the empire. So he's saying, so what you guys got to understand, let me show you guys something. Now, we know that Augustus died at, at, in 14, right? Now, they want us to believe that Pontius Pilate, right, which was the Roman governor during the days and times of Tiberius. Now, he, now uh, Pilate was in power from 26 to 27 AD, and then again from 36 to 37 now, what you got to understand about Pilate is that Pilate, they try to butter Pilate up in the Gospels like he was a nice, this dude was ruthless. That man killed so many Jews of our ancestors down there in Jerusalem. It wasn't even funny. They had to pull him up out of there. That was back in 26, 27. And then they sent him back down there. He was killing up a storm. You know what I'm saying? So if he wasn't in reign to 26, 27, how in the world did Jesus die for somebody's sins? How's all of this stuff? How did Pilate do all of this stuff that y'all believed in the Gospels in Melito, the early church father, the faithful man? That carried the things passed down from the apostles is telling you that this stuff was in operation way before the days and times of Pontius Pilate. Just stupid. And they ain't talking about some dumb demons. Go tag them boys. You tell them, come holler at me. Come holler at the teacher. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm checking homework. You know what I'm saying? 
Now, listen, I told you, I'm busting these lies up. Now, listen what he goes on to say here when we get back over here. Ancestors, he said, along with the other religions prevailing in the empire. Listen what he says. A very strong proof, uh, moreover, that it was good that the system we profess came to prevail at the same time that the empire of such happy commencements was established. Is this that ever since began the reign of Augustine, nothing untoward has happened? So he's saying when the days of the times of Augustus, when this stuff sprung up, nothing has happened to him. So all of these fantasies that y'all believe in the book of Acts, Paul was chasing people all through Syria and the disciples being chased all around. It's a lie. If they're following the faithful men that the, that, that the apostles passed this stuff down to, they would know this. These are in the writings of Melito of Sardis. So what is these boys talking about? Stepping on these boys, man. See, one thing you never do, you never get in the way of a firing gun, especially when you got big bullets coming out of them big 762s, okay? Will tear an elephant down, will chop a tree in half. And I don't care who they go get. Go get their best teacher and tell them stuff in the ring. And you know what? Since they talking all of this stuff, tell them to come out. We want to hear. Don't go silent and tiptoe and run into these pockets. I'm going to bring them out of them holes, okay? Because I'm not going to stop. They should have never got started with me. You know what I'm saying? Playing games. You know what I mean? And this is going to happen to anybody that get in my way. I'm not playing. Listen what he says here. He says, um, nothing has happened to it. He says, but on the contrary, everything has contributed to the splendor and renown of the empire in accordance with the devout wishes of all. Nero and the mission alone of all the emperors imposed upon by certain calibinators have cared to bring any appeasement against our doctrines. They too are the source from which it has happened that the lying slanders on those who profess them have in consequence of the senseless habit which prevail of taking things on heresy flow down to our own time. So during the days of times of Nero, they, they, they were persecuted, but it wasn't no Christians. It wasn't no apostles. It wasn't the Hebrew, the, the, the Jews that they want you to believe. It was these, 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 uh, these fake Christians that follow Mithra. This has nothing to do with any Hebrews or any people. That, that, that is a lie. You see what I'm saying? Because we, we have already identified the doctrine and the origin of his doctrine. And it don't originate with Jesus or no Peter or Paul. It was already in operation prior to that. Okay. So listen to what he says here. Uh, he says, but the course which they and their ignorance pursued was set aside by the pious progenitors who frequently and in many instances rebuked by their rescript those who dare to set a foot any hostilities against them he said it appears for example that thy grandfather adrian wrote among other others to fundamus the proconsul then in charge of the government of asia thy father too Listen, it appears for example, come on, it appears for an example that thy father Adrian wrote among to find them as the proconsul being in charge of the government of Asia, where all the churches was at, the seven churches and all this other stuff. He says, Thy father too, when thou thyself was associated with him in the administ administration of the empire, wrote to the cities, forbidding them to take any measures averse, measures averse to us. So how in the world is Christians being persecuted when he's telling us that they wrote and told them not to do nothing to him? And this in the same, this is in the Bible, but where the seven churches of Asia is at. And, and, they, and they're supposed to be going through all this persecution. But he's telling us that they wrote, that, that, that Adrian wrote to them and told them not to take anything against them. Now, who was Adrian? Okay, let's go ahead and just pull the rap sheet on these people, on these emperors. Okay, see, I told y'all, I'm not playing with these boys. Adrian reigned from... August, uh, the year 117 to 138. So if he wrote to them and told them not to do nothing, how in the world was people like Ignatius and all these other people persecuted when he's telling us that he told them not to do nothing to these people? But they want you to believe that Ignatius was on this. This, this, it's all fantasy, man. It's all theater, man. Melito was telling you what it is, man. And this is why they have destroyed their writings because they don't want this stuff to get out. Because it proves that these people were not following some Jesus or some man, some mystery man walking during the, during, through the land of Judea back during this time period. Come on, man. It's a lie. And this is why nobody, there's no, they, can, they can't get nothing from this time period because it didn't exist. 
Okay, now listen to what he says. Among the rest of the people of Larsia and of Thessalonica and of Athens, and in short to all the Greeks, and as regards thyself, seeing that thy sediments respecting the Christians are not only the same as theirs, but even much more generous and wise, we are more persuaded that thou will do all that we ask of thee. Okay, so what is all of this stuff about Paul and Thessalonica? And at, all of this stuff is made up, beloved. Melito, the early church father, is telling us that this doctrine that they're believing sprung up and originated with barbarians. He did not say the Hebrews. He did not say the Jews. He said the barbarians. So Christianity was already in flow before some Christ that they made up was walking the earth. It is lies. And this is why the father told you, as he spoke by the way of the prophets, the Gentiles are going to come in the last days and say, we have been told what? Lies. They have been given lies from their ancestors. This stuff is Greek mythology. These people worship Mithra. And the proof is in the pudding. So if they want to run us to the church fathers and the faithful men that, 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 that carry the gospels after the apostles, what is Melito talking about? The great luminary of Sardis. He tells us the origin of this Christian doctrine, and it didn't originate with no, no, no Messiah running through the land during that time period. So you tell them boys to come out of those holes that they're hiding in. All these people that's talking about the early church fathers, and they want to run you into this trash, this Greek trash. Tell them boys to come out and play. Okay. I'm on my back outside tour. I'm outside and I can do this. And I got, and this ain't, and this ain't even it. I got plenty of this stuff. I could do this forever. That stuff is full of holes, this stuff that they believe in. in. So Melito Melito tells us that this stuff that these boys are believing in is fairy tales. So I love y'all. Y'all stay strong. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Shalom.